that what I'm about to share with you could actually save your life. Now, I know a lot of us, when we wake up to abuse and realize what's going on, can cling to these videos about narcissistic abuse and these terms about narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths and borderlines and cluster Bs and all these psychological terms and we are in a state of surviving at that point where our fear is the only thing kind of keeping that person at a distance, keeping us from going back to them. I just want to share something with you that has changed my entire life and has helped me to begin to thrive with Jesus, to begin to thrive after abuse. And that is no longer using the term narcissist, no longer using any of those terms at all. Recently, actually not that long ago, I realized that after falling into that sort of psychological paradigm about those types of broken people, those types of people engaged in all sorts of evil behaviors, and I want to say that this video in no way justifies abuse or apologizes for abuse whatsoever. This is about victims of abuse getting free and the traps and the bondage that we can get caught up in when we focus on the other person too much. And what he revealed to me was that I had been carrying a critical spirit since I woke up to that abuse, since I fell into all the videos and articles and psychological paradigms about narcissists and cluster B personality disorders, including sociopaths, psychopaths, borderlines. And I became obsessed and I couldn't stop ruminating on my trauma. My trauma wouldn't stop looping in my brain and it broke down my entire body. Or at least that's what I thought had happened when I ended up completely disabled and debilitated by several dozen chronic health issues and symptoms, none of which had any cure. And I was so convinced the whole time and I was so disempowered thinking there was nothing I could do about that because I had been through all this abuse trauma and that's why I was sick. And I couldn't get well unless I agreed with all the psychological paradigms. I think I had about 16 years of therapy and I only got worse and worse and sicker and sicker mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually. And it was actually just recently that I realized that the Lord helped me see that I was carrying a critical spirit. And I didn't see it, you know, I was so caught up in the sins of the other person and what they had done to me, understandably, you know, righteously angry even. And even though those things healed over time and I felt I had forgiven people, this spirit consumed my entire life long after I even moved on from abuse and trauma. It colored my vision of how I saw the entire world. In essence, it was its own paradigm and the shift of paradigm I needed to make with God, with Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, not my own has since set me free from the bondage and captivity I was still in to all those people who had abused me. Of course, all those traits and characteristics and things we learn about the narcissist may be true. I'm just here to tell you that if you maintain a critical spirit towards the world and other people, regardless of how they're behaving, not condoning other people's evil or wounded behavior, you will never heal. I'm telling you that as someone who has healed, and it was sort of the final piece for me, but the most important, the one that was the hardest to see was what needed to shift within myself for me to be able to heal. And it turns out it wasn't actually what other people had done to me. It was this view of judgment and criticism I had picked up of those people that then translated to the rest of my life and broke me down. No matter how much we heal from trauma, the world remains a fallen, broken place, and those of us who know the truth and know what the truth is and who the truth is know that and know that it's not going to change without him and that that change begins with us. Think about the woman caught in adultery from the Gospels where they come to stone her and condemn her to death and they ask Jesus what to do. And he says, let he among you without sin cast the first stone. And they all begin to walk away one by one hanging their heads, starting with the elders, because they realize that they're no better than anyone else. Now that may be hard to stomach, that may be a hard pill to swallow. We may not have done anything even close to the evil that these people did to us. But remember Jesus also said, bless your enemies, don't curse them. Being kind to them is like heaping hot coals on their head. And also that 
the greatest commandment is to love God and also to love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say love your neighbor only if they're a good person who never hurt you. I'm not saying keep abusive people in your life, people who can't control themselves, people who can't stop hurting you and other people. But what I'm saying is in order to actually heal and move on, you have to stop labeling them. You have to stop judging them. Remembering that judgment is reserved for God alone. Judgment is not our business, nor is revenge, nor is justice. Justice is all God's business. And as Christians, we learn these things. And we think we have to manifest them on our own, and we have to forgive people and do all these things. But I just want to remind you that I needed Christ to overcome all this. I needed Christ to overcome this spirit. I needed his spirit, God's spirit within me to shift and transform me out of that critical spirit and into a spirit of love, peace, mercy, grace, kindness, and forgiveness. I'm not even saying forgive these people to their face or invite them back into your life, but I am saying that 12 years ago, judging and criticizing them broke my whole body down, robbed me of my life, and continued the abuse within me for those people and essentially destroyed me until Jesus saved me two years ago from myself and from my own brokenness. Not just from the things they had done to me, but from who I had become. I think a lot of the times we think we need physical healing from things or psychological healing, but God heals us by love. And he heals us by the work that his spirit does within us. We don't do the work ourselves. We simply invite him in and tell him we need him and that we need help. But if we stay in a critical spirit and we maintain these sort of terms from pop culture and psychology to keep that person at a distance, we're gonna continue to keep God and his healing at a distance as well. Friends, remember, we are not called to live like the world system, like the world culture. Remembering that God never justifies abuse. God abhors all evil. God is perfect, pure, and good, and all evil is a sin, not just against you, but against God himself. But also remember that Christ gave us grace. Christ forgave us of all our sins and continues to, and that that person can be forgiven, can be healed by God. I'm not saying we should wait around for that to happen, but we definitely should pray about it anytime we feel ourselves criticizing them. That's one thing we can do. Remembering that God is the only arbiter of justice and that we cannot heal on our own, we cannot forgive on our own, and we cannot thrive on our own without him. In fact, humbling ourselves before the Lord means admitting that we need him for everything, that we need to learn to live by his spirit of peace and goodness and gentleness and mercy within us. The spirit that didn't come at us with a rod, but with a spirit of love. Remembering most importantly that when we continue to stay in judgment and criticism of our enemies, it doesn't actually protect us. It disempowers us. It keeps us stuck in survival mode. It keeps us from moving forward. It keeps us with this lens and this perspective that the whole world is evil and bad. And that's all we become able to see. And it will break our bodies down, our minds down, and break our spirit but that the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. Knowing that wherever you're at with this, inviting God into this process to help you overcome this is the way that we don't transform ourselves, that his spirit, his power, his grace, his love, his beauty, and his peace are what transform us. In Jeremiah, the Lord said to the Israelites, for I will restore you to health and heal you of your wounds. But what he meant by that passage, if you read the context, is via repentance. Now, it can be really challenging to think that we might need to repent when someone else has done evil or abuse towards us. But I'm here to tell you that deep healing happens when we can acknowledge and see our part, however small it may be, and give that to God so that he can set us free from the bondage, from the heavy yoke we're in to evil people. Remembering we don't fight people but principalities. And if we have a critical spirit towards those people who harmed us in our lives, that is something that we probably need to repent of. And when I began to do that myself, when I could see it, the Lord showed me how it had broken my entire mind, health and body down and crushed my spirit, kept me sick and oppressed by those people long after they were gone. We don't have to be ashamed and we don't have to excuse abuse in order to see that we aren't perfect either. It can be really easy to entrench ourselves behind a wall that says the other person is all bad and I'm all good. But the truth is, none of us is good but one, that is God, as Christ said himself. The truth is that God loves us all, even the people who wronged us. 
It can be difficult to see them through his lens, through his eyes of love. We may be afraid to do that because we fear that we might let them back into our lives to harm us again. But when we do this, that's also because we don't trust God to protect us and there are deep wounds that need to heal there as well with the Lord. So I encourage you to take all of this in prayer to the Lord and to reflect on who you became to survive that person in this world because the Lord wants to set you free. But it requires us seeing ourselves held in his love and mercy and grace, which in turn makes us more loving, merciful, and gracious to other people who are flawed, broken, and falling short of the grace of God themselves. This path is not for the faint of heart, but it is the path to total liberation and freedom through Christ Jesus. And one last thing, we want to remember not to turn that spirit of criticism inward on ourselves, as that's no help either, but to remember that God can forgive us, God can heal us, God can help us if we turn to him and ask him to, ask him for help. Sending you so much love, friends. May this video bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.